Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So today we are going to discuss the that how we can do the piecewise interpolation. So we will start with the linear spline and then we will go for the cubic spline. So let us start with the, the concept of linear spline. So in this case as we know that suppose I have a data and some data points are given to me that are not necessarily equispaced. So this is my x0, y0, <coughs> x1, y1, x2, y2, this is xk, yk, xk plus 1 y k plus 1 and in the end we have this one as x n y n. So, we have total n plus 1 data points and this is given as x i's y i's i's from 0 1 up to n. So, these data points are given to us. Now, what I do I try to approximate this one with the help of the piecewise linear function. So, this is my line, then I will take this line, then I will connect these two points, I will connect this line and then in the end I will get this line. So, this is the line we are getting from x0 to x1 and this you can say as this is the connecting node. So, we have to take care that what will happen at the connecting node. So, in this case we have that let we have data points x i's, y i's, i's from 0, 1, 2 up to n <coughs> not necessarily equispaced. So, these are not necessarily equispaced. Now, in this case I will define the piecewise polynomial that is S x says that, so now first I will start with the, in the first, so let us uh, try to define what will be the line, equation of this line moving from x0 to x1. So I have the points x0, so define the line when x belongs to x0 to x1. So, I, I know that how to write the equation of the line. So, I will write y minus y naught is equal to y 1 minus y naught x 1 minus x naught x minus x naught. So, this is the way we can define the equation of the line and from here I can write that my y will be y 0 plus y 1 minus y naught x 1 minus x naught x minus x naught. So, this is the equation of the line. So, I call it, suppose I write it 1, so this is my 1. Similarly, the next equation of the line will be, so this is the y when x belongs to x0 to x1. The same way I can define y is equal to y1 plus this is y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 x minus x1 when x belongs to x1, x2. So, this is the second one. So, this is 2 and this is the equation number 2. So, this way I can define all the lines. Now, the thing is that I want to check what will happen at this y at x0. So, y at x0 I will choose this line like the equation number 1. 
So, if I put y x naught, x is equal to x naught, so this will cancel and that gives me y 0. So, ok, it is satisfying this one. What about y at x 1? So, if I put x is equal to x 1 here, I will get y 0 plus y 1 minus y 0 divided by x 1 minus x 0 and this is x 1 minus x 0. So, this will cancel out, this is cancel out and I will get y 1. So, the equation 1 definitely is passing through this point, it is a line, so it will satisfy these conditions. Now, I want to use what will happen at the connecting node. So, this is my connecting node. So, at the connecting node or I can say common node, this is satisfying. What about the equation 2? So, in this case, if I put y at x 1, what will get? So, if I coming from the left side, I have used this one and at at x 1, I found that y will be y 1. Now, I want to see what will happen for the next one. So, in this case, I am choosing the equation number 2. So, this will be y 1 plus y 2 minus y 1 x 2 minus x 1 and this will be x 1 minus x 1. So, this will be 0 and that give me y 1. So, the value of y the first uh, linear equation gives the value y 1 and the second one is also giving y 1. So, from here I can write that this equation as I call it as 0 x, I call it as 1 x. So, in this way I can define the kth linear interpolating equation can be written as, so I call it s k x. So, this is x k x. So, I am talking about the linear. So, this is equal to y k plus y k plus 1 minus y k divided by x k plus 1 minus x k x minus x k. So, this is the, the kth linear equation passing through so, x belongs to x k to x k plus 1. So, in this interval, now I can move this x, this k. So, if I take the k from now, this is true for all k. So, k is starting from 0, 1, 2 up to n minus 1 because it is going k plus 1. So, I have to take n minus 1. So, there I will get the total n number of linear equations satisfying this relation. Now, the same way I can define s k plus 1 x. So, in the next interval, so I will get y k plus 1 plus y k plus 2 minus y k plus 1 divided by x k plus 2 minus x k plus 1, x minus x k plus 1. So, this is my the linear equation in the next interval. So, I, I can call it this is 3 and this is 4. Now, from here I can say that the add the common note S k. So, common note is this one. So, this is the common note. So, this is I have defined x belongs to x k plus 1 x k plus 2. So, the common note is this. So, this is the basically common note this and the this. So, I can verify that x at x k plus 1. 
So, uh, if I put x k plus 1, this will cancel out, this will cancel out, I will get y k plus 1. Similarly, s k plus 1 at x k plus 1. So, in this case, if I put x is equal to x k plus 1, this part will be 0 and that will be y k plus 1. So, this is the linear function I have defined. So, now we can write the, so the resulting linear spline function can be defined for all x belongs to x 0 to x n such as, so my s x will be <coughs> y 0 plus, so I call it the, because I know that y i plus 1 minus y i x i plus 1 minus x i. So, this is a same as the divided difference. So, I call it d i. So, let us call it d i. So, that is the divided difference. So, difference between the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. So, I call it d 0 and this is x minus x naught. So, this is when x belongs to x 0 to x 1. Now, it will be y 1 plus d 1 when x minus x 1 when x belongs to x 1 x 2. So, in the same way I can define y k. So, that is d k x minus x k x belongs to x k x k plus 1. And in the end, I will define this one as y n minus 1 plus d n minus 1 x minus x n minus 1, when x belongs to x n minus 1 into x n. So, this is my linear spline and that is we have defined for the whole interval. So, from here I can say that this function s x is a continuous function. Because at the common node we have seen that if I coming from the left side or from the right side that is equal and that is equal to the value of the function given at that point. So, from here I can say that this s x is a continuous function. So, this is my linear splines we have defined. So, I can take the example also. So, let us take one example as we have taken in the previous lecture also. So, suppose I have the data, suppose we have the data f 0 is 1 f 1 is 3 and f 3 is 55. So, in the in the previous lectures, we asked about the Lagrangian interpolation or the Newton divided difference interpolation for this type of data, when we have three points of data. So, now in this case, I want to approximate this with the linear spline. So, this is my 0, this is value 1 and this is 3. So, this is 1 and this is 3. So, at this point, this is the value given to me. Suppose, this is 0, 1. So, this point is x is 0 and y is 1. Another point is 1 and 3. So, suppose this is 1 and 3 and the 3 it is 55. So, suppose it is coming very far. So, it is 3 and 55. So, in this case, I want to approximate this with the linear spline. So, I will take this line and then this line. So, from here I can define the first line and the second line. So, from here we can 
define the linear interpolating polynomial one as defined in one. So what will it be? So I am writing this as a S zero x. So this will be the value it is given to me. So this is one plus three minus one one minus zero x minus zero. So from here I find that the value is equal to one plus so it is two x. So the equation of the line is 2x plus 1. So this is my s0x when x belongs to 0 and 1. Now the same way I can define what about s1x. So s1x is defined in the next interval. So this will be 3 plus it is 55 minus 3 divided by 3 minus 1 into x minus 1 because I am taking the value at x equal to 1. So from here I will get 3 plus it is 52 divided by 2 x minus 1. So 3 plus 26 x minus 1. Now from here I will get 26 x so 26x minus 26 plus 3, so it is 26x minus 23. So that is the equation of the line 2. So this is my S0x that is defined 1 and this is my S2x. Now from here I can verify what about S naught at x equal to 1, the common node. So this is the common node. So at the common node x equal to 1, if I put it here, so this will be 1 plus 2 into 1, so it is 1 plus 2 that is equal to 3. And S 1 at x equal to 1. So this is 26 into 1 minus 23 and that is 3. So at this value the connecting node is this one, the answer is coming this. So from here I can say that my Sx, the piecewise function it will be 2x plus 1 when x belongs to 0, 1 and this is equal to 26x minus 23 when x belongs to 1 3 1 3 so that is the answer of this question that how we can approximate the given data with the linear spline functions so this is a, the way we can define the linear spline function now so based on this linear spline function, I want to define the quadratic or the cubic spline. So in, in our course, we will talk about what about the cubic spline. So in the cubic spline, the same way, suppose I have the data. So suppose this is value x0, y0. This is x1, y1, this is x2, y2, then we have xk, yk, next is xk plus 1, yk plus 1, and in the end I have xn, yn. So this value is given to me. Now what we want is that, so in the previous one we have approximated these two points with the line and that linear polynomials we have taken with satisfying 
the continuity condition at the common nodes and then we are able to define the linear spline. Now in this, in this case what do we want? That we want to approximate in each sub interval, I will I want to define approximate this with a some cubic function. So, this is a cubic function I have defined. Now, what I want to do? I want to define this cubic function in such a way that at the common nodes the tangent should be same. Okay? So, the, that is the first condition is that, that this function should be continuous. The second condition is that it should satisfy that the derivative on the left side should be equal to the derivative on the right hand side. It means that the function has a smooth derivative here. So, that is the smoothness of the function and the third one is also that, that the curvature if I want to see the curvature, the curvature of this should be same. So, if I am taking the curvature from the left side or the from on the right side, I should get value the same. Similarly, it should happen here, it should happen here. So, if I define from here like this one, then suppose next point is this. So, if I if, if this is taking turn like this one, then in this case if you see the tangent here is this one, but tangent here is this one. So, that is not allowed. So, our function, the cubic function should be smooth enough. So, I can define this as this one and then going like this one. So, the function that turn the moving of the function should be smooth from one sub interval to the another sub interval. So, that is the definition of the cubic spline. So, let us uh, define that what is the meaning of cubic spline. So, now, so we have So, suppose we have the data x i y i, i moving from 0, 1, 2 up to n. So, this is the up to n, this is given to me. Then I call it that the function s x is called a cubic spline if, if there exist n cubic splines. So, in this case we have, so I should take this small n because we have total n plus 1 points. So, in this case we have n sub intervals. So, there exist n cubic splines S k x with coefficients S k. So, this is the k I am considering here 0 x S k 1 x S k. So, it is a kth x and so on. In the previous one, we have taken this one as S k and uh, at that time only I was talking about the linear function, but now we are taking the kth. So, this k means it should be a cubic and 0 means it is defining. So, s k 0 x basically is a cubic function for x belongs to x 0 to x 1. So, that is there. So, in this case we when we can define that s k 0 that is defined in the x belongs to x 0 and x 1. Similarly, if I want to define s k may be k x. So, 
k plus 1. So, these are the coefficient I we say that these are the coefficient of the cubic splines and then in this way we can define the cubic functions in each sub intervals with the condition that so this coefficient that satisfies the following properties. So, these are the properties is to be satisfied. So, so let I call it S x the cubic spline. So, this is x k x. So, that is equal to S k 0 x plus S k 1 x minus x k plus S k 2 x minus x square square and so on. So, I define it as so I want to define the cubic one. So, I will define it as k 3 x minus x k cube. So, in this case uh, I should remove this one. These are the coefficient basically. So, it is with the coefficient s k 0 no no this is s k so these are the coefficient with s k x that is s k 0 x so, these are the coefficient basically. So, I should uh, put it like this one S k 2 and S k 3. So, these are the coefficient uh, we have to. So, this is a plus S k 1 x minus x square plus S k 2 x minus x square plus S k 3 x minus x cube. Now, in this case what I want to define? I want to define the cubic spline. So, I know that the cubic spline in general it is written as a plus b x plus c x square plus d x cube. So, we need this three coefficient, four coefficients is to be evaluated to find out the cubic spline or cubic uh, polynomial. So, in this case also I define the function S x is called the cubic spline if there exist a n cubic splines. So, n cubic spline means I am defining a cubic in this interval in any of the sub interval with coefficient x k 0, s k 1, s k 2, s k 3 like this one. So, that is the coefficient I need to calculate with the help of the properties that we define. So, this satisfy the condition. So, that satisfies the following property. So, the first one is that S k is the given polynomial and that should be equal to S k for any x belongs to S k x k plus 1. Second one is that S at x k should be equal to y k. So, at each of the point this point, this point, it should be the interpolating polynomial, it should interpolate the polynomial. So, these are the following uh, three more properties we have to discuss. So, that we will discuss in the continue with the next lecture. So, so I will stop here today and then we will continue with the, the same cubic spline in the next lecture. So, today we have started with the linear spline interpolating polynomial for the given data and we have tried to solve one example also and now we will move to the cubic spline. So, that will continue in the next lecture. Uh, so, thanks for watching this. Uh, thanks very much.